And Nick had his little charisma, he had his little style about him. So when it came time for me to make my move, I went and scooped it up. Michael Craig McDermott, a.k.a. Mike Geronimo, born September 14, 1973. Today's feature is the story of what it takes to really find true success, keeping in mind that success is subjective to how each individual sees it from their own perspective. A lot of times, peace can be confused with success, and in those times, peace is really what the person is in search of, and to them, when they find peace, they feel they've succeeded. No one can truly define success because in the end, success is meeting whatever goal you set and being content with your life if it brings some sort of peace. I say that all to say, Mike Geronimo seems like a person I relate to in that nothing outside of himself determines his next moves even if it means being closer to worldly, materialistic progression. If it doesn't feel right, he'd rather not be a part of it. He'll give you the shirt off his back if he feels something in you genuine, and in that moment, you've shown a quality that connects to what he deems as trustworthy. But like Mike said himself in his interview with Math Hoffa, those kind of people are usually taken advantage of, and the people that do the taking don't even notice all the time what they're doing. They are just caught up in finally being around someone real that their true energy has to show at some point because they feel they could be themselves around an energy like Mike Geronimo. I feel like all of this is important because it explains Mike's story of why he never became a bigger rap star. But you see him today at almost 50 years old in a few days and he's still shining, still looking healthy and still doing music. He's at peace with himself. Of course, to the world, it can look like another old head that didn't make it like he should have without understanding that in life, not everyone goes to the top. If everyone's a seller, then who's gonna spend money with you? Some have to be the consumers. If every rapper that picks up a mic makes millions of dollars and lives a plush lifestyle, then every single person driven by making money would be a rapper. There has to be examples that didn't succeed even if to help someone younger and up and coming navigate through these stories and find which is the best route for them. There could be another Mike Geronimo out there looking for his small piece of success but discouraged because of how bright success can seem. For that person, maybe you find inspiration in understanding why Mike Geronimo said himself that he's always been afraid of success. He was bigger than Jay-Z, Ja Rule, DMX, and Nas at one point, but never made it to the level those guys did in music for these reasons. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to Rain DJ for this request. It's your boy JC Sonic Growth Music. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Mike Geronimo is a rapper from Flushing, Queens, New York that grew up on the local military base to a father that fought in three wars and was once a New York detective and a stepmom who he sees like his own mother. Mike's influences were the usual if you came up in those times, Big Daddy Kane, LL Cool J and more. He started crafting his own rhymes and performing in local talent shows which is where he met Irv Gotti, who helped get him his first radio spin with DJ Ron G for his underground classic, It's Real. At that point, Mike Geronimo's life could have changed completely if that's the kind of success he wanted. Change attempted to come, as in the next 24 hours, he says his life went from unknown to now everyone was calling and wanted a piece of him. But for Mike, he just wasn't on board. Stunt number one, afraid of success. I'll begin here not only because Mike Geronimo expressed this was the feeling he got when things started to pop off for him, but because that very feeling he got was him understanding how much was about to come with that success. To me, when he said he's always been afraid of success, I don't think he means he likes being a failure or prefers living in the low-level environments he knew all around him, but what I deciphered him to mean was he knew deep down inside he wasn't built for that kind of worldly success everyone else chases. 
In that race, you lose friends, family, routine, your youthful innocence, and even yourself is a possibility. He probably liked his life the way it was and enjoyed the times where everyone was on the same page and everyone had it hard just trying to make it out. That bond of being still in the hood and everyone still grinding is less pressure than when it's finally time to step in front of the cameras and prove yourself. That road never ends and proving yourself is a time after time thing until you die or made enough success for yourself that you no longer have to play the game. Whatever he felt that made him say and feel like that lets me know that he didn't have what it took to be a superstar, not in that way, and that's fine. It's almost like an introvert placed on stage to give a speech to 5,000 people. That's not their comfortable medium, and to them, they rather have success in a more low-key way where that pressure of always having to be liked or in front of the world to be judged isn't there. Because of this, there wasn't a sense of urgency or push from Geronimo to be the biggest rapper like ones right after him, Jay-Z, Ja Rule, DMX, and even Irv Gotti. Stunt number two, Too Jiggy. After Mike Geronimo's first album dropped in 1995, the streets as well as the industry began to take notice. The album immediately became an underground hip-hop classic, featuring Mike Geronimo at his most organic self, still hungry and on the grind trying to make it, as well as some of hip-hop's future greats before anyone even knew they would become that, like Ja Rule, DMX and Jay-Z, all on one song called Time to Build. To say that song aged well is an understatement. At that point, Geronimo was the bigger artist on that song, many feeling he had the potential to take it where Jay-Z eventually did. That song, as well as the lead single It's Real, were produced by a young, then hungry producer named Irv Gotti. Geronimo recalls Irv jumping out the car and crying when the song was first played on the radio, understanding that from there, they were on. But not just yet, Geronimo's debut album didn't perform so well on the charts, peaking at 144 on the Billboard 200, which was seen as a flop, causing Geronimo to look elsewhere for music that would chart and sell better. He links with Sean Combs, aka Puffy, who's interested in working with Mike, but wanting him to refine his image to fit Puff's attempt at making hip-hop more clean-cut, shiny, and mainstream. So comes the song Nothing Moves But The Money, in the same mold of what Puffy did for Mace later on, but this time it didn't work. Puff didn't even show up for the video because he wanted more money. The song flopped and his second album, Vendetta, flopped as well. Nothing Move But The Money did become his highest peaking single, had 70 on the Billboard 200, but for Mike's personality and fan base, going the jiggy route on album 2 wasn't the move. Stunt number 3, Everything Moved On his second album was pretty much the last time Mike Geronimo had a chance to blow up as a rapper, even though he may have secretly been afraid to. After the Vendetta album, it took another five years to drop another studio project. Not just any five years, but some of the most important in hip-hop, the late 90s and early 2000s. By 2003, Jay-Z was one of the biggest rappers in the world, not to mention Ja Rule was on fire at the time, and DMX had a few classics under his belt. Geronimo had nothing, not in the last five years at least, and in that time, many even forgot he made music, specifically the fans who had so many other options to support at that time. Irv Gotti blew up with Ja Rule, then Ashanti and a host of others, and all Geronimo's pairs had reached that success he was so afraid to, and from there he faded away into hip-hop obscurity where only the ones that were there and understand are still interested in what happened to Mike Geronimo. All in all, Mike Geronimo seems like a genuine person that understands and is at peace with not becoming the person everyone wanted him to. He got to do classic work with some of the biggest names in hip-hop and held his own next to them, leaving many to believe he could have been just as successful. 
but for these reasons, his growth musically was stunted. It's your boy JC Stunner Growth Music. Salute, much respect, and I'm out.